In this video, you will learn how functional programming in JavaScript can enable you to write clean, reusable code. So I'm going to focus on just one aspect, uh, which can be somewhat confusing at first, uh, passing a function as an argument to another function. And this will enable us to build what's known as a strategy. And a strategy supports variations in logic by extracting the variable parts of a function such that the caller will be able to vary behavior of the callee. So let's take, for example, this function that I've built called adder. Its responsibility is to accept an array of arguments from the caller and tally up the sum of the uh, numbers in the array and return that sum to the, to the caller. So if I were to call this function, and pass in an array of numbers, something simple, now let's put a little message in here to be friendly. The total is, and whatever that value should be, returned here. And when we run this, I think that we're going to see 15 come out as an answer. Okay, so there we have the total is 15. Let me run it one more time for you. There we go. I misspelled total. The uh, So my objective now is to provide a way in which I can alter the behavior of what Veer, what may vary within this procedure or what may need to be varied inside of this procedure. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to add only the odd numbers in the array, I would maybe modify my code so that uh, if ar sub i mod 2 is 0, or is 1 in this case for odd, then the behavior would be changed internally. And by running, again, we should see that the number is now 9. And if we were to verify that, it would be 1 plus 3 plus 5, which is, in fact, 9. If I wanted only the even numbers, it would be changed to this. And now we should see 6 as an answer. The total is 6, as we see it here. Now, the, uh, the problem <clears throat> with this approach is that uh, if you want to have separate functions to perform these operations, well, for odd and even isn't bad. So I could, I could change this function name to uh, even adder and then have another one for odd adder. But to think of all of the different possibilities, maybe I want those numbers that are uh, prime numbers or those numbers that match the Fibonacci sequence or any any type of a uh, a variation in the uh, in the behavior of this procedure it becomes unwieldy over time so what i would like to do is provide a way in which the caller can determine or specify what behavior will be used in this piece here which is what is known as the variable uh, part of the function. So it would be nice if I had the ability to pass in an, uh, a method or a function so that the, uh, the caller can pass in the logic or the algorithm that will be used to determine uh, what what are those? What are the numbers select? What, are, what is the number selection criteria going to be? So uh, for example, let's say I had a function called is odd and that function is odd takes a number n and returns true or false so it will return true if n mod 2 is equal to 1 and another method call it is even that returns true if n mod 2 equals 0. So <clears throat> functional programming lets me pass in, at runtime, the 
uh, function that contains the, uh, the logic that will be implemented inside of the adder function. So I'm going to take this if statement and modify it ever so slightly. Uh, we're going to put some <coughs> information inside of the adder function that uh, will accept a, a filter, let's call it. And the filter will represent the procedure that, we'll, that the caller will pass in. So we'll say here, if when we call this method that the caller passes in, and we'll call it filter, and that filter is going to take the current value of the iteration <coughs> indexed into the array. Now, uh, given this, my filter, the first pass, I want it to be uh, using is even. So I'll just uh, add that as an argument. And now when I run it, I should see the even numbers appear. So there we go, six. So the, <laughs> we're, we're solving the objective. We've separated the, uh, the, the parts of the function that varied uh, so that uh, the caller was able to uh, alter the behavior of the call E. And uh, in this case here, the call E adder doesn't know in advance what type of logic it will be uh, returned, but it knows that it's going to take an argument and return true or false. Or we, we know that by assumption based on the way we've written this. So um, uh, if I wanted to uh, just test out the is odd functionality here, we should see the number nine. There we go. And uh, we could take this a step further and uh, literally pass in the, uh, the code that will uh, be used at runtime as an argument. So I could say here, n for the argument. So I'm, I'm passing in what's known as an anonymous function. And the logic in here, we'll just say return, we'll say return true. Okay, so in other words, it will always return true. In this case here, we should be uh, effectively back to the starting point where uh, our adder was adding up all of the numbers in the array. Let's go ahead and run this. There you go. So we're back to the sum is 15. Okay. Now, uh, the, the last question is what happens if the, uh, if the caller doesn't pass in uh, an argument? So in other words, we go back to our original case where we're passing in nothing here as a second argument. In that case, we would have to first check to see uh, whether or not uh, the filter is, uh, is viable, is, is uh, passed in. So we're going to make one more little check in here. I'm going to say if, uh, if the filter hasn't been passed in, then I want all the numbers to be uh, uh, added to the total. Or if we, if if not, we're going to, uh, or if it has been passed in, then we're going to go back to the, the, the past argument. So we'll run this again, and we should see that the number 15 is passed back as a result. Okay, so we've solved the problem. Uh, and one final uh, further example here that I've already written out, uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the array itself uh, provides a, a method called for each, and this is designed with the... Uh, functional programming in, in, in use uh, where, where we can pass in a, uh, a function to the for each that determines the logic or specifies the logic of uh, what we want to what we want to do uh, during it, each iteration of the numbers inside of the array. So you see here that uh, my array dot for each call, uh, this is part of uh, JavaScript uh, uh, implementation. If we're going to uh, go ahead and run this, and we see that the, again the number is 15. But how do we? Uh, how can we vary this to to use our is even and is odd? Well, it turns out that the for each has a special uh, optional argument that you can pass in. It's referred to as the this argument. And uh, so I'm just going to say here uh, that this argument being passed in will be a filter called is even. And now inside of our code, we can uh, we can check the the value of uh, is even. So if this, it's called the this argument because it represents the object that will be used within the context of the for each loop. If 
this number, the current number during the iteration. So it'll start off with one, then go to two, then go to three, then go to four, we would assume. And uh, although the order doesn't necessarily matter. So we're going to check to see if it exists. Um, tally up the results. And you therefore have a total sum. So again, this was uh, just a, a way to get us started with uh, functional programming and uh, hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Thank you.